right, this is our last demo for today, and then we'll have one more interview to go before we go into networking and kind of talk to all of us um, and each other. So without further ado, let's welcome our last demo for today, Martin from Con Quantstamp, and he's gonna talk about how do we actually now make all these attempts to make L2 transitions secure. So please welcome Martin on stage. Hi everybody, my name is Martin. Uh, I'm from Quantstamp. Quantstamp uh, is a security company. We do lots of audits. We audit smart contracts, we audit blockchains, we audit layer twos. And so through these audits, we are actually accumulating a lot of knowledge. And you know, from my position, I'm the head of new initiatives. For a very long time, I've been wondering how could we use this knowledge that is accumulated you know, at our company to kind of contribute a little bit more to the public good and, and greater good uh, of the greater Ethereum community. And so, you know, when November came around and uh, the Ethereum Foundation published a round of uh, community grants focused on L2s, I was thinking, hey, let's apply, let's do something, okay? So I'm here today to tell you about the two grants, or, you know, I will be speaking about one of the grants, my colleague Jan, who will be step on the, stepping on the stage halfway through, uh, will be speaking about the other uh, grant. Uh, so I'm gonna tell you what we did, where you can find it, and I'm going to invite you for some future collaboration, okay? Um, so the one grant that we applied for uh, was concerning block explorers for L2s, right? Uh, if you take a look at the landscape of la uh, L2s, you have a whole number of chains that you know, build and roll up to Ethereum, right? You have your Optimism, Arbitrum, you have something like ZK Sync, uh, you have actually a boatload. And all of them are somehow different. Now, when you look at the landscape of block explorers, uh, the situation is actually not that great, right? You have Etherscan, which has been adopted as, let's say, industry standard. It's a great product. It provides great user experience. And you know, many of these layer twos, they actually work with Etherscan and use their services. But if you are looking for something open source, you will probably find Block, Block Scout, and you will very quickly realize that it actually doesn't give us so much. It is not designed to be working with uh, layer twos. It actually you know, doesn't show you all the information that pertain to layer twos. And so when we were applying for this grant, we were actually thinking whether it is possible to fix this, right? We were asking whether it's possible to define a standard for an API that would be working as a data source for implementations for open source block explorers. So that teams at hackathons, such as these you know, ETH Global hackathons, they can actually come and they can develop a new block explorer front end that will also provide you know, great experience similar to Etherscan or maybe even better, right? And that they can feel that this is gonna be actually a useful project because the blockchains, the layer twos, will be supporting these data source endpoints that they actually require. And on the other hand, we also want it, uh, you know, for the networks that are building uh, these L2s to have block explorers available to them because it's really important during the development process and then, you know, for the community and the adoption, it's really important for them to actually be able to see what data uh, is on the L2 network and what is happening with the network in general, right? So here I have the slide. We were actually trying to define a standard for an API that sits right in the middle between the block explorer and between the chain and its, po its potential indexer that the block explorer can consume and you know the blockchain in some form or some middleware can expose and uh, feed data into it. Uh, and we did it. We uh, define a whole methodology around this process. So, you know, first we actually did take a look at all those L2s that exist. And we were trying, there's like, you know, 30 to 50 right now. And we were trying to distill this list to some representative samples. So, you know, we picked everything that we thought that kind of matters and that captures all the variety of uh, data and data models that exist on L2s. And then we dissected that. We actually defined the data models for this shortlisted selection. And using that, uh, we tried to define requirements for a block explorer. So we sat down and we said, hey, so if I now wanted to develop a block explorer, 
how should it look? What should it provide to me as the user of this Blog Explorer? What features should it have? What data should it visualize? You know, what data flow would I kind of expect, right? And so, you know, that way we formed kind of an opinion of what an explorer should be. But then we need to cross-validate it. So we actually went back to Etherscan and to all the other blog explorers that we were able to find. And we said, hey, did we actually do this right? Did we you know, forget about something, right? Are there any additional pieces of information that the blog explorers show, up, show to the users uh, and that we might have forgotten? And once we had that, we refined our own requirements. We made sure that they're a little bit more complete. And based on this whole thing, we have proposed the API. So the API currently, we've decided, or this API standard, we've decided to expose it in the form of a GitHub repository. So this giant QR code that you can see uh, on the slides, that actually leads to that repository. Normally as researchers, you know, we publish long papers in PDF format, right? This was actually not the project that would be suitable for such a way of publishing. We just decided to uh, expose a repository to the public. So what you can find in that repository is pretty much everything that we have done. We have defined those requirements for blog explorers. Uh, you will be able to find you know, the methodology, the reasoning behind our decisions. And we have also exposed an open, open API uh, definitions of uh, you know, what these endpoints for an API should look like. And so we did that, we wrote it up, we published it on GitHub, and now we believe that it's actually the community's turn to take a look at it. So as I said, I'm inviting all of you for some collaboration in here, especially if you are participating at the hackathon that's gonna be happening over the weekend. And specifically what I'm asking you to do is the following. So first of all, take a look at our work, right? We've done a lot in here. So please take a look and review it. We are humans, we make mistakes as well. We were really trying not to, right? We spent a lot of effort in here. Uh, but please do review it and let us know what you think. You know, the repo is open for PRs. Uh, there are contact informations in there. Please do that. Then if you like it, uh, what we have actually defined in here is a standard that is fully modular because, you know, we currently have some sample of L2s that exist, but it's sitting right now at this time. Uh, maybe tomorrow there will be new L2s. Maybe they will have new features, right? Maybe, you know, in half a year, the world will look completely differently. So we'll, we have decided to go for is a modular design in here where you can extend the design with additional features for the specialized L2s. So if you know of such an L2, go for it. Open a PR, extend the standard. And then finally, this is a standard for the API. So, you know, try to use it. Try to implement such an API, right? Pick your favorite scroll, pick your favorite optimism, pick your favorite anything and implement an indexer that will be capable of exposing this API. Or on the other hand, if you're a front-end developer, imagine that somebody has implemented such an API and that you have a data source and try to come up with a front-end. Beat Etherscan, make it better, yeah? So this is an invitation for everybody who will be hacking during the weekend. Now, because I'm not so pretty to look at for 15 minutes, I will be passing the word to Jan. Thank you, Martin. Um, I'll, I'll hold, hold the applause because I'm told we're running over time, so I'm going to make this very quick. Uh, my name is Jan Gorzny. I'm head of L2 scaling at uh, Quantstamp. And like Martin, when the grants uh, were opened up in November, we thought, how could we um, contribute to this space? And being a security company, we naturally thought, let's look at some security issues. And so that's exactly what we did. And the goal was for this grant to um, set up a security framework that complements and expands the stuff that's already out there. So you probably are familiar with L2Beat and maybe some other frameworks that exist and certainly some issues that might uh, be common inside of a roll-up space. But we found that some of these were slightly ina inadequate or totally inadequate depending on sort of the questions, right? In particular, L2Beat does a great job of, of a lot of things. They do things like, um, you know, is an escape hatch missing, right? And you look at that and you, you can say, see very clearly on the, um, on the website that yes, it's missing or no, it's not. But what does that really mean? And, and does it matter that it's missing or not? 
Because if I need an escape hatch that requires you know, a lot of ZK hardware because I have to do some proofs, is that a useful escape hatch to me? Or what is the outcome of not having such an escape hatch in those features? or in, in such a rollup. So what we did was we, we also did a bunch of effort and we, we, we put together 130 or something pages of questions that we think people should ask of a rollup. We don't envision most people will do this you know, every day all the time and we hope to put it into some sort of a web app so it's a little easier to use, but for now we just defined everything. And at the end of the day you sort of look at the classical hacks that we've seen or the issues that, that uh, can affect a rollup and we give you a, a sort of a scoring based on what the answers to those questions were. So you know if you, if you have an escape patch, you, you'll score fairly high on, on its feasibility because it exists. Um, it might be lowered if it does require special hardware. Again, we took the same approach. We looked at what was out there. We wanted to look at the attacks. We looked at all of our favorite rollups. We looked at all of your favorite rollups. Um, and we tried to figure out you know, what's out there, what's missing, how can we improve it, and what is unique to rollups? Is, it something, is there something that people really need to look at for the system? when it's not um, you know, a side chain or something else that's sort of closely related. And then we tried to expand on the, the areas that we thought other frameworks were missing. And we then went a little further and tried to suggest some areas for future research. So I'm gonna speed through this slide for time. Um, but like the other one, we have open sourced um, the work. As of today, we, we've, we've looked at this, or we, we've opened it up for you guys to look at, sorry. Um, and so we also want feedback. You know, did the questions do the questions make sense? Do, do the ratings make sense? Would your favorite roll-up score poorly? And if so, is that because they're actually underdeveloped or is that because our, our tuning is a little bit off? We'd love to know those answers. Um, and in particular, we'd love to see exactly how um, you know, concrete examples fit into the roll-up. We have some ideas and some drafts, but we aren't able to publish it in a nice clean form just yet. So we do wanna do that. If you want to learn more, we will be giving a more detailed talk about this at the l 2 b event in Warsaw in the end of August, or you know, come talk to us, or you know, send us an email. And in the interest of time, I'll end it there. So I want to thank ETH Global for having us, uh, the Ethereum Foundation for the grants. We do have one more that is in progress on roll-up compression, and we'll talk about it at some point. Um, but for now, thank you.